Yeah, it's starting to get warmer here in Alabama, and uh, everything smells like uh, you know Fourth of July. They have those uh, those black snakes. Um, everything smells like the aftermath, like the smoke of those nasty things. Um, yeah, it's just. Uh, I feel like I live next to like a Louisiana rest area. Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about the audiobook of Michelle Obama's Becoming. I'll put a picture over here since I can't hold an audiobook, obviously, unless I had the CD and I don't have the CD. Anyways, um, I've been in a pretty down mood. Um, whenever I'm in a, a shitty mood, I tend to wear bright colors and try to seek out things that make me feel better about my situation. Um, I don't like just sitting around moping and wondering, <laughs> wondering what kind of crap is coming next. I tend to revisit old favorites or uh, dependable things. Like I'll go, like right now, I just, out of the whim, I just o opened up Carrie by Stephen King and started reading. Um, and that cheered me up a little bit. I had my mom made make me a bunch of bright, at the brightest possible colors that she, that she could find out of her yarn, um, make a bunch of these, uh, these beanies. So you're going to be seeing a lot of those. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuff trying to, trying to make something negative into something positive. Um, and that's, I, I don't know that that's exactly the, the theme of this woman's life, but Michelle Obama went through some stuff, um, a lot of stuff. Um, it's not terrible, horrible stuff, uh, but there, there, she did have some rough times, um, but the, the shining point of this whole thing is her unflagging positivity. Um, like, things were going to be alright, things were alright, moving on, you know, it's a very strong message of hope. Um, same, same thing Barack Obama, you know, went on the campaign trail with, is it was all about hope. Um, and that's one of the things that Michelle Obama brings in her book, is hope. Um, even though the very last chapter, I think, of the book, before the epilogue, it might have been the epilogue, I'm sorry, I, I finished reading this about a week ago, and I spent about a month listening to it. Um, roughly about a chapter every other day, sometimes a whole chapter, you know, two days in a row, that kind of thing, but I wasn't rushing anything. Um, and... I, I kept wanting to come back to it. She kept drawing me back in with this, with the personality that was on, sh that was showcased. But one of the things that, that got me the most was um, even when, you know, she, you see these huge public figures and you watch them, you know, either make mistakes publicly or throw their entire life out there and you tend to forget that these are just regular people. Um, she's just a regular mother, you know, she, she's, a, she's a wife, she's a woman, she's someone's daughter, she's all these different people, and it's the same thing with Barack Obama, you know, he's just another dude, uh, he just happened to have the world on his shoulders for that course of time. Um, and all the way up until the epilogue, or the part where she brings up uh, the 2016 election, where Donald Trump was elected president, um, it's, like I said, it's unflaggingly positive. Um, then you get to that last bit, and it kind of made me, you know, it, it, I reverted just that quickly to remembering we're still in this, in this situation. Um, now, I don't want to get overly political because this, th this book is not political. In fact, she goes... She, she goes to extreme lengths to try to convince people that she is not a political person. And she's not. There wasn't any political mumbo-jumbo or anything. I learned a couple of things, but it's more along the lines of, had I been there, I probably would have learned the same thing she learned. It's not like insider information. Um, I don't think, anyways. That's not how it came off. Um, the best part about this is the view into a politician's life that has almost nothing to do with politics. Yes, the book ends on a sour note reminding 
us um, what happened. And I don't, I don't care what side of the fence you are with Donald Trump. I really don't care. I don't even want to discuss it. I'm sure there'll be some bullshit down in the comments. There always is. Um, but like I always do, I just delete you. Um, it's, it's when you're rude. I don't mind you popping in and saying, you know, this, that, and the other. It's when you're an actual asshole about it. I don't have to listen to your opinion. I don't have to. That's the joy of running my own channel. I don't have to deal with you. I just delete you and you go bye-bye. <laughs> so, um, and it's not to ward off differing opinions. I have you, talked to anybody who know, knows me, any of the regulars of the channel. I try my best, especially in the live streams when someone comes in with a different point of view than mine. I try my best to let them talk. I try my best to get their point of view. Um, Usually that ends up backfiring on me because it takes a certain personality to defend an individual like Donald Trump. Whether or not you think that you know he's a good person or not, what, whatever you think of the guy, it takes a certain type of personality to look at that man and see something to be revered. Um, now she does go on about this, and I'm not going to go on bashing Trump or any of that crap. Um, but... I appreciate how she talks about going to people's houses or doing, you know, town halls and her coming away with the feeling that we're all in the same boat here. We're all just human beings trying to make it and we have these weird things like religion and politics and all this stuff that we that gives us some some idea of either control or um a little reprieve from the chaos. Um, when we know, you know, rationally speaking, you know nothing is promised, you know. You know that there is no guarantee what's after life, so make the best of it that you can while you're here. Um, and I, I appreciated that. Uh, I, I appreciated the whole book. I could have done without the last bit. But that was just me in my own personal space. I went to that book. I dove into that book wholeheartedly, hoping to catch some positivity. And I did, because people told me that it was, you know, it was very positive. There was almost no politics, so I decided to give it a shot. Um, and my wife's currently listening to it now, and she, she feels the same way. I almost want to tell her, you know, don't check out that last chapter or that last bit, because it is considering the whole, that last, that last bit is depressing as hell because you all this happiness positivity yes there's some deaths in her family there's some sad moments and whatnot but most of it is just as bright as her face on that on that cover just a big grinning smile and that's what i felt the entire time i was listening to her read me her story and then we got to the end and we had to end on that you know pissy mood um uh that pissy note there at the end but have you read or listened to Michelle Obama's Becoming? I'm so sorry if these uh, reviews and everything are kind of low energy, but I am definitely not in the proper headspace to do this. But part of the thing, the number one thing I do when I don't feel like doing something is I go ahead and fucking do it anyways. So here I am. Um, I wish I could have done a review for this that was more upbeat, but uh, you know, you're, you're getting what you're getting right now. Uh, you got to go with the flow and right now we're we're scratching bottom but uh let me know if you read the book if you listen to it i would especially like to hear from you if you are of a differing opinion or a differing side of the fence um whether or not you enjoyed this book or whether or not you despise this book but please don't be a jerk just tell me what you saw what you read what you heard Tell me how it affected you personally without going, Oh my God, the SJW liberal agenda. I don't want to hear that bullshit because that's not me. And I know deep down that's not you. So let's have a discussion down there if you've read the book. I'd love to talk to you. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. It doesn't look too terribly bad. I mean, I'm starting... The hair up top is starting to fill in. In case you're new to this this whole thing, um, in case you just popped in, like, hey, look, look at the fat dude. Um, I, I'm growing my hair and my beard out, and I'm not doing anything to any of my hair follicles. I'm not cutting anything um, until March of next year. So I am a month in, but I haven't actually shaved. I usually shave my head. I haven't shaved my head or 
shaved my beard since February. So the begin right at the beginning of February. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, before that, I was just trimming and everything. And I know this isn't like spoiler time for for the book like I normally do. If you're new here, at the end of videos, if I have spoilers to talk about, this is where I talk about the spoilers after the outro. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, I'm still like thinning up, up here, which is the whole reason why I started shaving my head. But it doesn't look too terribly bad. And the beard's starting to fill in. So I'm happy with it right now. Let me know how ridiculous I look down there. Bye-bye.